Good evening, and welcome to the graduation ceremonies for Salisbury Composites Class of 1997. I would like to introduce Tara Settle, and my name is Regan Hack, and we will be the Masters of Ceremonies for this evening. To begin, we ask everyone to rise as Carmen Helmley, a graduate tonight, plays O Canada. finally here tonight. This has been talked about for what seems like years, even though in actuality it's only been a few months. But this night is here and we have made it. Tonight we are celebrating our years at Sal and our years together. We ask Reverend Dennis Butcher, who has been part of a team ministry for 11 years, to deliver the invocation. Let us bow in prayer. Tonight, O oh God, we gather as your people to recognize the milestone and achievements of the Salisbury Composite Graduating Class of 97, this major step in larger life goals. Give each one the vision, strength, and courage to go on from here to dream dreams and to accomplish them. Help each graduate to discern what it is that you would have them do and be. We give you our heartfelt thanks for the support and encouragement of parents, family, teachers, and friends who have helped them to this point, and we ask you your blessing on them as they pursue further education, careers, and employment. Help each one gathered here Fill each day with the quality of eternity. May we live the moment before us to please you and trust the future into your hands without fear. Be with each of us, each one as they go their individual ways, and enable each to invest his or her life in unselfish, enduring service, and be the sons and daughters you would have them be. Amen. Thank you for your words, Reverend Butcher. We appreciate you being a part of our celebration tonight. We know this is an important evening for everyone and that pictures need to be taken, but we would like to please ask you to capture the memories from the designated areas on either side of the stage. As well, please turn off your cell phones to allow our ceremonies to proceed without any interruptions. And 
And so everyone, <laughs> and so everyone here tonight can enjoy our program, we ask for your undivided attention. Proceeding with the program, we are pleased tonight to, in to introduce Mrs. Wendy Lippa, who will be bringing greetings from the Board of Trustees. Good evening, graduates, parents, teachers, students, special guests. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this important ceremony. Participation in this joyous occasion is one of the most pleasant and satisfying parts of being a school board member. We have gathered again to pay tribute to our graduates. We are here to celebrate the 12 years of schooling and to see a new chapter begin in their lives. Some of you here tonight may have looked forward to this moment for some time. Others perhaps been frightened to see the day arrive. And with every change or chapter in life, we are left somewhat wondering, what is the next step? And what does it mean to our lives? Graduates, you are taking a giant step as you start an adventure into the real world of adulthood. Some of you will be thinking about university, others about starting work, still others perhaps getting married. Some of you may even decide to take a year to contemplate and think about where you are going from here. You know the stay home and get rich scenario? Good luck. <laughs> Whatever and wherever you may decide to navigate your course, there are a few lessons that one should decide to take along. And so I want to take you back just for a moment to those very first years in the public school system and that is kindergarten, where you in fact learn the most important lessons of your next 12 years. And quoting from this book, all I ever really needed to know I learned in kindergarten, goes like this, most of what I really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but actually there in the sandbox at nursery school. These are the things you learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess and don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Live a balanced life. Learn some, think some, draw some and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. And take a nap every afternoon. Now some of you may have been practicing this already in some of your classes. Should I ask your teachers? When you go out into the world, watch the traffic. Hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Remember that little seed in the plastic cup? The one where the roots go down and the plant goes up? and nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like that. Parents, so much growing has happened in the 12 years. Hard to believe, isn't it? Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the plastic cup, they do all die, and so do we. So graduates, remember tonight, as you celebrate, stay safe, for we really do value you in our community. One of the first words you learned, the biggest word of all, look. Everything you need to know is in there somewhere. The golden rule, love, and basic sanitation. Ecology, politics, and sane living. Think of what a better world it would be if we all, the whole world, had cookies and milk about 3 o'clock every afternoon and lay down, and then lay down with our blankets for a nap. Or if we had a basic policy in our nation and other nations to always put things back where we found them and cleaned up our own messes. And it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. In kindergarten, one of your greatest gifts that you used every day was your imagination. And whether sitting in the sandbox or drawing a picture of your family, you used your imagination. Keep that valuable resource alive, for without it, the world is dull, it is routine, and it is stagnant. And let me close with a poem, Dare to Dream. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Your dreams come true. Childhood is a magical time. 
regardless of whether you grew up in a happy family or an unhappy family. You really believe wishing on a star make, makes wishes come true, so you dare to dream. But somewhere along the way, we learn that all dreams do not come true, and there is no Jiminy Cricket. We experience disappointment, and we may begin to feel that dreaming is a waste of time and effort. In our quest to fulfill our wishes in another way as we grow up, we learn to be competent, to know all there is to know, and always be right. In doing this, we lose the natural curiosity and wonder of childhood. Dare to dream like a child and plan like an adult. It is my privilege to honor the 1997 graduating class of Salisbury Composite High School. On behalf of the Elk Island Public School Board, congratulations to all of you and may God richly bless you. Thank you, Mrs. Lippa. Our next speaker this evening is Mr. Ken McRae, who is representing the superintendent's office. Please welcome Mr. McRae. Honored guests, graduating class, parents, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and honor to attend your graduating ceremonies on behalf of the executive team and central services. To the graduates, you will look back on this day and cherish the moments for years to come. You are closing a chapter of your life, and I'm sure you are eagerly, eagerly anticipating the next phase. Your dedication and performance over the next few years will determine the success you make of life, so be sure you develop your potential. Bob Edwards made an observation in 1920 that is still very relevant today, and I quote, the path to success is paved with good intentions that were carried out. The implicit message is to set your life objectives and pursue them with vigor and enthusiasm. Robert Frost, in his oft-quoted poem, The Road Not Taken, wrote the following, two roads diverged in the yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And I looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Frost was reflecting on choices in life and expressing regret that he could not do more. He concludes his poem with these thoughts of the future. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads converged in the woods and I. I took the one less traveled by and it has made all the difference. Frost opted for the less traveled road because he felt there would be greater challenges to conquer and rewards to reap. My message tonight to the graduates is to make the most of your opportunities. Like Frost, you will reap the success you deserve according to the choices you make and the effort you put forth. I'm sure you'll all leave footprints in the path of life and you will enjoy working for the goals you have set. To the parents and families, as well as the teachers, you can be proud of the love, guidance, and assistance you have provided our grads. You have been the wind under their wings, and they would not be here without your help. We will pass the torch to them in the not-too-distant future to carry with confidence because of the foundation you have given them. To the graduates, enjoy a safe evening, and I hope you have many more celebration points throughout life where you can stop and reflect on your accomplishments and realize that you have made a difference. Strive to reach your potential, enjoy the journey, and may God be with you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comments this evening. Carmen Helmley has taken piano lessons for nine years and is working on her grade 10 Toronto Royal Conservatory. She has competed in the Sherwood Park Music Festival for four years and is a graduating IB student. Once again, we welcome Carmen to the stage as she performs Hungarian, Opus 29, number 12.
Harmony, your talent is amazing, and we thank you for sharing it with us. Tonight, we are honoring the memory of two special students who were taken from us early this year. Cameron Lyle. attended the French Immersion Program in Sherwood Park from the time he started kindergarten to when he completed French 31A here at Salisbury. We remember Cam's great sense of humor, his talent for playing hockey, and his amazing ability to get along with everyone. Chantal Hale also began school in the community and was completing her high school courses on a four-year program as she was a dedicated figure skater with the Royal Glenora Club in Edmonton. Chantal was able to balance her schoolwork with her dream to skate. Chantal Hale and Cameron Lyle were to be part of the graduating class this evening. Would Mr. and Mrs. Lyle and Mr. and Mrs. Hale please come forward? We are presenting you with these caps and certificates in memory of your children as we honor them along with the rest of their class this evening. know our parents were always there, especially it seemed when we didn't want them to be. But seriously, they have encouraged us, supported us, and stood behind us as we grew into the people we are today. In appreciation of their efforts, we are pleased to introduce Corey Marshall with a tribute to them. Corey was a member of Salisbury Senior Boys basketball and volleyball teams and played Team Alberta Volleyball in 1996 when they won the national championship. As well, Corey is an honor student and will be attending Grant McEwen in the fall. Mr. Jim Marshall, Corey's father, will reply. Good evening. What comes to mind when you think of a parent? Is it the constant lectures, groundings, and curfews that all of us have gone through on more than one occasion? Or is it their love, caring, and support they show in all that we partake in? The truth is that a parent only wants what is best for their son or daughter, and it is very rarely that we, as a graduating class, get to say thank you. Thank you to the people in our lives we care about the most, our parents. Approximately 18 years ago, we came into this world unaware of what to expect, even crying when we saw the first glimpse of light in that operating room. It was our parents, mom shrieking in pain and dad turning blue in the face because of the tight grasp of mom's hand, who were there that day to begin to guide, educate, and watch over us as we began to adapt into the huge new world surrounding us. Our adaptation into society must have been so much easier than that of our parents many, many decades ago when they were children. I mean, we always hear stories of how our parents had it rough when they were young. From hiking 390 miles to school, over that treacherous terrain, in the freezing cold weather, with holes in their shoes, to watching that terrible black and white television. Boy, are we thankful today to have our own cars to drive. Parents are our educators. From our dads teaching us to catch a ball or ride a bike, to our mothers trying to teach us good etiquette and table manners. In my household, this was always hard for my mom to accomplish because while she lectured on pleases and thank yous, my father sat across on the other side of the table stuffing himself with mashed potatoes and gravy. Sometimes we even had to stop to remind him to breathe. <laughs> even though most of the time we do not like to admit it, our parents are our role models as well. Have you ever noticed that when we were children, we would try to imitate our parents to make us more grown up. 
us guys shaving at the age of six and asking for sips of dad's beers at those Sunday get-togethers, or the girls using mom's expensive perfume and makeup and experimenting with those high heels. These are all some of the memories we share with our parents. Almost six years ago, I lo almost lost my role model to a car accident. It made me realize how special my dad really was. The emptiness I felt that day, when I didn't know whether or not he would ever be the same again, showed me how much I loved him. It also made me aware of all the things that parents do that we overlook. I mean, if our parents weren't here, who would remind us to eat three meals a day, check upon us to make sure we are safe, remind us to do our homework, and give us money to do those countless activities. They are truly special people. As we all go our separate ways at the end of tonight, we must never forget what truly got us here. Our parents were there in the very beginning when we came into this world, and most of them are here tonight to share this evening with us. The reason we are here graduating tonight is because of our parents. That is why we would like to say thank you, and we love you with all our hearts. Graduating class, will you please rise, and with applause, help me show our gratitude to our parents for all their love, dedication, and support. As a special tribute, I would like to call upon another student who has been actively involved in Salisbury activities throughout high school. She's helped to organize the 30-hour famine with Campus Life and was an active member of student council in SAD. Becky Osterveld has sung with a triumphant sound choir for the past five years. As a dedication to our parents, she will sing Because You Loved Me.